Okay, welcome back. Uh, today we're going through the hunting. So we go through it with a young spaniel called Echo, and, and that'll be the spaniel hunting. And then we go through the Labrador hunting uh, with young Sabre. Um, purpose of the hunting basically is uh, we want the dogs to be under control on scented ground with game, um, especially for the Spaniels if we're going beating. And the most important thing we've got to teach a young Spaniel and a Labrador is to be switched off. So once we get to the beating area, once we get off the beater's wagon, we get to the start of the drive, the dog wants to be around us, close by us. We then line out, we then start the drive. Um, the dogs want to be walking next to us. Early season, pretty much they're going to be next to us nearly all the way. We're bound to get pull out during early season on partridge. Um, and the dog's got to remain at heel throughout that exercise. Once the season moves on a little bit, uh, we're getting into November, December, January times, the dogs will be working more. Um, we've got to be able to bring the dogs into the drive, hunt them, switch them off. Might be a sit, might be a wait, depending if we're holding a line or we're pulling out. Um, but we've got to be able to control that hunting. One thing people don't teach when they're hunting a dog is that process. So we want to be able to hunt, heal, hunt, heal. You'll see that especially with a Spaniel, it's very important to get that ability to better switch the dog off. Okay, so to start off, we're going to get young Echo out. We're going to go through what we do with the young dog to introduce the turn whistle, which is basically walking up and down a field. Every time I turn around, I'm going to blow two bips on the whistle and ignore the dog and change direction immediately. What you find with a young dog is it will take a while to click on to the turning, but as you progress through the exercise, the dog will get tighter and tighter and tighter. And we should see that when we actually get echo out, you should see her getting closer and closer and closer to the hand there because she's understanding what the turn whistle means to the point we can put her into a sit. That's confirmation, she understands what the turn whistle means. Then we can go into a V-shaped pattern, a figure of eight as most people call it. I'm not really after a pattern at the moment. I just want the dog to change direction as I blow the whistle. So we're on scented ground. Um, there's gonna be plenty of opportunity for Young Echo to pick a scent up. Using this technique and just by turning around and blowing the whistle twice, if we carry on walking and ignoring the dog, it will learn to follow that scent. But as she re-engages is what we call a check-in, all she's going to see is the handler's back. She's going to be pulled back to the handler. It's a very important technique that we go back to as we go through the different phases of hunting. Then toot toot. As soon as it comes past you, toot toot again. And again. Nice. Now she's paying your attention. That's good. As soon as he starts doing that, you can put her in a sit. Nice, well done. And heel away. Close. Close. Hey, close. Nice, well done. Okay, so we just finished the puppy um, hunting exercise with the young Echo. What we're going to progress on to now is using the dummy to guide the dog in our V-shape hunting pattern, uh, the figure of eight. So all, all I want the handler to do is show the dummy with the beep beep and physically walk in a diagonal then when we change hands, beep, beep, and we change the diagonal to the other side. This will encourage the dog to follow us, okay? What we can do then to end the exercise is lift the dummy up in the air and we blow the stop whistle, the dog will sit. We can then do a memory, walk out, place the dummy down, walk back any area and send the dog. Um, and that gives us a nice clean finish the exercise with delivery, which will then allow us to go back into heel work for five or six meters and then start hunting again. As the dog progresses, the heel period should get longer and through different types of obstacles, uh, walls, different cover strips, crossing a road, anything that you would be doing on your shoot, you want to get a dog used to doing that now. Okay. Okay, so as you can see there, Young Echo's really come on. What we're going to do now is the third phase, which is basically just using our hands, our body language and the whistle to turn the dog and keep control. If the dog goes a little bit too far, I prefer to use my voice and overuse the whistle. So if I toot toot and she pulls on a little bit, I would just say here, here as a command to clearly indicate where I want the dog to come to. And we'll see how Young Echo gets on now. Wait, leave it.
going. Hold it. Rub your hands. Here. Just here. Wait. 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 Go on. I say, keep rubbing your hands now as she gets to you. Close, close. Hey, 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 hey. Lose it. Wait. Ah, here. Here. Dead. Good girl. Much better. Close. Good girl. Okay, heel back to me now. Heel. Close. Good girl. Good girl. Close. Here. Here it is. Good girl. Here it is. Good girl. Yes, good girl. <laughs> Close. Nice. Good girl. You're the best. Okay, you can see there with young Echo how we progress through the three stages of hunting with a young Spaniel. Okay. What we're going to do now is a hunt up with a Labrador. The difference between the two is hunting for Spaniel breeds is for lifting game, generally speaking. And with a Labrador, a retriever breed, it's for finding game that's been brought down through shooting. So it's a hunt up. So the command we use for that is find it. We don't help the dog, we don't point, we don't whistle. It's literally, we step off and we say find it. If a dog needs help, we can guide it to an area. Our job with a retriever breed is to assist the dog to know which areas it's been into. So my job as a hander there is to grid the grain out and know where that dog's been so I get the maximum amount of grain coverage to ensure I've picked up as much game as I can. So I'll go and get young Sabre now and we'll show you how we, how we teach the find it exercise with the Labrador. Okay, so we've got young Sabre here. I'm now gonna get him to find some game that's been shot. We use the command find it. I'm just gonna walk down, hands in pockets, and just walk in the direction that I know the game's been um, brought down in. Okay, so I'll just step off and say, find it. Find it, Sabre, find it. Find it. Find it. Find it, where is he? Find it. Where is he, Sabre? Find it. Where is he? Find it. Get on, Sabre, where is he? Find it. 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 Oh, good boy. And I call him back in. Good boy, what you got, eh? Sabre, yeah, yeah. Good boy, good boy. Dead and sit. Hey, sit. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, so as you can see there, we've done all the um, different forms of hunting. So we've got the Spaniel, steps one, two, and three and I find it with a Labrador. What you'll see with a the Labrador there, he's staying close to me because he's not confident at the moment. As I repeat that exercise six or seven times in the same area, he'll start broadcasting himself out more and hunting more effectively. That comes with time and experience. Once you've been on a shoot and I know where the birds go, they'll go to those areas automatically. But it's a relationship thing. As soon as he finds something, I want the dog back to heal for a couple of steps and I cast him off again to go and get his next, next game. 
if it's a, a runner or something and we're doing more directional work, we'll be covering that later in, in the further episodes of the uh, series. Okay, so that's it for today for the hunting episode. We'll see you in the next episode when we put all those exercises together where we do hunting and retrieving at the same time. Thanks very much.